Like you get to leave in a minute. You're fine. <laughs> Sorry about that. Is that too low? Can everybody? No. no. Hey, yeah, Sarah, we have yeah. to take yeah. in here. Can everybody hear us okay? Or me, I guess. That's who. <laughs> so you're going to want to hear. I have the mic. <laughs> Well, you can you can turn them on and off. Unless I look okay, are we good? Are we good to go? Did you see if anybody answered? Yeah, okay. they say we're back. We're back. Okay. okay. Hello, everybody. This is our first painting project, which is all the purple flowers. And I just wanted to introduce you to our crew, everybody that's doing this behind us. So say hi to everybody. We have Casey, Rachel, Al. Don't you want to tell them what they do? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Casey's our fearless intern. Yes. <laughs> Rachel's going to be painting with us today. Al runs this thing, <laughs> pretty much. Missy's helping us with camera work. She'll be um, uh, answering or saying your questions. And we have Natalie, who's painting with us today. Yes. Same as Jenny. Same as Drea. Same as Sarah. <laughs> same as Chad. And then we have Jake, who's also doing our camera work. So welcome. We just wanted to introduce you to everybody because right. we're going to spend a lot of time together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is our first project that we are going to be doing here today, which is all the purple flowers. And um, hopefully you have your supplies ready, your water. Uh, we have five different paint colors here today. I'm just going to read them off really quickly. Hopefully you already are familiar with them. So we're going to use black. Daffodil yellow, moss rose, hyacinth blue, I think I'm saying that right, and uh, olive green. And um, before we start, I just want to say thank you for joining us. And um, this is new for all of us, right? We're all kind of learning here. So I'm just asking you to be kind to yourself as you're starting this project and to be kind to us as we figure out the best way to go about painting and us connecting and, and teaching with you. So um, I want everybody to raise their right hand. <laughs> everybody over there, Natalie, Sarah, raise your right hand. And I want you to repeat after me, which is, I will not be too hard on myself. I will not be too hard on myself. <laughs> I'm going to have a great time. I'm going to have, have a great time. time. And I'm not going <laughs> And I'm not going to be a perfectionist. And I'm not, not going to be, be a perfectionist. perfectionist. <laughs> Thank you. Because we're not, we're all learning here and everybody paints differently. And you'll see as you paint more that your styles are going to come out. And that's what we celebrate is we celebrate our differences in how we paint. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, I'm going to start here with my round four brush. And um, I'm painting on Canson watercolor paper. It's a nice thicker paper. It's not regular paper, so it's not going to buckle underwater. And uh, I want to start here with this first flower um, that we have right here. I'm not sure if you want me to hold it up too. But uh, we're going to start here. And I like to lay down my larger flowers first, so we're going to do a few flowers. And um, so you're just going to get your brush wet. And you're going to mix a little bit of the blue and the moss rose together. So you get kind of like a pink purpley color right there. It's this one. It's the moss. Is, yep. It's the pink. Kind of mix it together. So you want a lot more red and a lot, a lot. Uh... I'm going to steal your color mixing. Here. Okay. <laughs> I'll make mine then. Okay. Just a little bit of blue. So, so you might even. <laughs> uh, if they're small enough, maybe. You know, we want them nice and small. Just mix that up and see how see how small. Okay. Okay. Mossy. Is that better? Okay. Dre, you're gonna have to scooch a bit. Oh no! Look at that. It's better. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with laying down. Yeah. We're just going to do, um, kind of start on the right-hand side of our paper. We're just going to do a dot or a, a, like an oval. Okay. And then we're going to do circular lines around this oval. And we want them to be alternating. So it's going to be line, 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 line. And you're just going to do that a few times. And as you go out, your lines are going to get a little bit bigger. Let me move this a little. Okay. 
And then... Raise your right hand. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to lay down a little bit of color where I want the bottom of my flower to be. Um, I'm just going to do a few strokes because um, you know how the bottom of the flower kind of uh, goes out and blooms out. That's what we're trying to make. And now I'm going to rinse my brush off completely. And I'm going to spread out the color I already laid down on the bottom in a circular way. And that color that we first laid down, that's just going to naturally spread out. And you'll see here that I'm leaving a little bit of white spot right here, right? Because we kind of want to highlight on our flower. Um, so I'm not going to put any color there. And then where the top where I did my lines, I'm going to kind of um, start mixing those together. So I'm going to be doing the same circular motion around. Did you put more paint on or is that all I did not. It's just the paint that's already there. So you're going to be doing circular around. And we want it to get... Um, kind of like the lip of a cup. So you know how it kind of has like the first edge, the back edge. And then I'm just going to... And your flower is supposed to like meet up to this circle. <laughs> oh, yep. Like, yep, not. just like that. Mine's not far enough down. That's fine. If it's not far enough down, then just move it, just add a little bit of paint near the bottom. Okay. Like yep, uh-huh. Yep, Perfect. just add to it. That's right. And then for you, I would take yours and kind of... Um, let this edge go all the way to the edge. See where, mm -hmm. see where we kind of want it to meet. We're just going to spread that around. Now, if your flower is looking a little bit too light, don't worry about it. We can always go back in and add a little bit more of the darker detail work. So we're going to move on to our next flower. And for this one, which is this one that we're doing right here. Not sure. This one right here. So you guys can see. We are going to um, mix that color we already laid down with a little bit of daffodil yellow. So we get kind of like a peachy pinkness going on. Peachy pinkness. Oh, with this, with this. So you're kind of mis mixing um, three different colors here now. Now this one, for this one, uh, we did a little bit more detailed brush strokes, and we're not going to worry about that as much. Oh, I got a little this was the blue one. Right? Yeah. paint. Yeah, and if it, you can add a little bit more like that. There, so that's more like a pink. And um, we're just going to kind of do um, uh, an oval on this side, okay? So this is kind of like if you're looking at a flower from an angle and looking into it. Um, so it's just a little oval, and then I'm going to do the same thing that I did on this flower, which is paint the bottom of the flower. And then I take my brush, and I rinse it, and I just spread that color. Now, I want this flower to be a little bit lighter than my first flower, which means I'm going to use more water and less paint when spreading. So you're going to mix that. Yeah, we need to, uh, I think we need a little bit more red. You need some more. Yeah. And you guys can mix in between two here. Oh, okay. You don't have to stay within the little yeah. cubbies. So you can just like bring that out, mix it like that. I mean, and you don't have to go across these, um, these colors exactly. If you would prefer all of your flowers to be bright purple, go for it. You don't have to follow these colors exactly if you don't want. So we laid that down. When you try to follow them exactly, they're not the same. Yeah. Yeah, because every mixture is going to have a little bit different, a um, little bit more of one color. Yeah. Katie says, can you slow down? Yes, I can slow down. So, follow that in, yes. This is a little bit way dark. Really powerful. Yeah. If it's too dark, you can lift, you can just add water to it and take your paper towel so the water will lighten it and then if there's too much water yeah, you take your yeah. paper towel and you kind of blot it and okay. it's going to start soaking it up. I just keep my water on there? Yeah. I need the peachy pink. And then I'm going to... I'm turning the color of blood. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Here, I'll mix a little color for you. So we have the red and we have... Pretty sure. True professional. We don't. 
there we go. Okay, so here's our red. And I'm gonna mix it with a little bit more yellow. Hmm. Okay, so like There's this, going on with mine over here either, so. this is good. You can use this color right here. This one's beautiful. Okay, and then for, we kind of want to, this, this first thing that we laid out, we want to spread it out a little bit more. So with like a watery brush, we want it to be watered down again. Yeah, so you're going to use your clean brush. Yeah. Just so, and then kind of spread it out. We're a little behind. Can you go back to Yes. The oval. Okay, so I'm going to do it again on this paper. I'm just going to lay it right on top. So you do an oval. <laughs> Yours are mine. Oh dear. No, that's great. And then you're going to just do the bottom of the flower. And take your, yep, perfect. That's okay. Okay. And do the bottom of your flower. And then we're just going to spread it using clean water, similar to what we did for that first one. Oh my gosh, Sarah, that's so beautiful. Thank you. And then we're also going to spread this top part because really... So is, is the trick to kind of let it sit for a minute and then... You know, I actually like to work fairly quickly because you can okay. see here what's happening, Casey, if you want to see this. You, with this, because I didn't move fast, you can see my brush strokes that oh, I initially okay. laid okay. down. Whereas with this painting, you can't see those brush strokes okay. because no, if you work sense. fast enough, then it's just going to automatically spread out and you're going to lose those brush strokes with florals we sometimes want to do. We don't want everybody to see every single little line. Right. So, um, but if you can see your brush strokes, don't worry about it. And then um, when you do the lining of your flower, the outside of it, I like the edges to come up off a little bit around the side because then it looks like it's blooming from an angle and it's not just a straight line. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That was my screen. So we're going to go back over here. So you can see here that because I didn't work fast, I still have my brush strokes there, which is fine. That's not a problem. I'm going to try and add a little bit of paint to it so it um, bleeds a little bit more naturally how I want it to. And I'm going to try and lighten this darker spot here. Now, the thing with watercolors, you can't completely erase something. So if you want to lighten something up, the best thing you can try and do is just load it with water. And then take your paper towel and kind of blot and try and pick it up. Oh, okay. That's it's cool. not going to erase it completely, but it's just going to lighten it a little bit more. Yeah. And I'm just going to do a little bit of line work right here. Okay. Now, so the, the first two flowers we've just did, they, you're supposed to be looking at them like from an angle. So now we're gonna do one where as if you were looking from it straight on. So you're gonna take, I'm gonna do a little bit more of a purple flower. Which ones are purple? I think this one, yep. Um, and so we're gonna start the same way we started the first one, which is a dot. And we're going to do circular lines, but this time we want the alternating circular lines to go all the way around the dot of a flower evenly. When we do it at an angle, we kind of do it more on the bottom than at the top, where when we look at it straight over, we want it to be even around, and that's how you can tell that you're looking at it overhead. So we do our dot, and then I'm going to do alternating lines. And this is where uh, you kind of want to use more the tip of your brush okay. because you get a nice finer line with it. You're just going to cir circle around. Is this one the purple side? And I try and get my flowers. So this flower is going in between. And I want it to kind of touch. And then remember, you want to try and work a little, bit f a little bit faster so the colors smear nice together. So right after you lay down, you're going to get a clean, wet brush and just start doing that same circular motion around the flower. And I'm going to put a little more color on my brush because it's just not spreading because I'm not working fast enough. But you're going to see that those colors are just going to kind of naturally bleed out. 
-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, a little water. Like that. And then sometimes what I like to do after I lay down um, a flower like that is to get concentrated color, a really nice, and just kind of plop it in the middle. And that's going to just kind of move and bleed out. And that's going to look a little bit more like um, a flower because it has a concentrated center. Okay. And just plop it in the middle. Yep. Is that enough ploppage? Yeah. I would maybe even do it a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah. And just let it kind of move around. This okay. Cool how it does that. Yeah. Yeah, just how the color will naturally move within the water is super interesting and why I really love watercolor because it's almost accidental. You're going to get different results almost every time that you do that. So our next flower we're going to do, because we're still putting down our big flowers, which is the big thing with bouquets, we want it to feel full. And so we're going to do um, this one here next, right there. And um, I, this one I'm going to go a little bit a peachy again, a little bit more yellow, but you can do whatever color. It's easier to grab or whatever color you feel comfortable using if you're not yet comfortable mixing colors. And, um, and I'm gonna slow down a little bit more how I do how I do this side of it. So I start with the dot and then I take the fine point of my brush and I'm just going to do lines around them. Now Are you doing all the way around. What color is this we're using? So this is more like a peachy color. Okay, so what are we blending? So you're going to be blending uh, the daffodil yellow with the moss rose and a little bit of the hyacinth blue. Now I just want to show you really quick that when you do these and you do your circles, you're not going to want to lay lay it on top like this, right? Because when we do that, we lose. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, sorry about that thingy. <laughs> um, when we when we do this, it this doesn't really take a shape, right? It looks a little bit flat. So if we alternate it, then that kind of gives the impressions of petals. Because if you look inside petals, they're overlapping on top of one another, which is really what we're trying to emulate is the petals overlapping. So we're going to do circular overlapping, and as we go out our lines are gonna get a little bit longer and they can get thicker. Now, since we're doing this from the side, we're just gonna go more out on one side than the other to make it look like it's from an angle. So I'm gonna do my dot and I'm gonna do the lines. And on this side, I'm just gonna do a couple and then I'm gonna let it go more out on the top part. And it's the dot and these lines, is this the top of the flower mm -hmm. or is this the bottom? So this is the top here. So um, it's gonna be right, this so, part right here. Like so kind of like the opening. Find that line further away. Yeah, but if, yeah, you can turn that into the bottom of your flower okay. and probably do the top around there. Okay, so we wanna do a dot. So we're gonna do a dot, do, alternating. Do lines. Yeah. There's some laughter happening. Over there. <laughs> so you might pause and go check on them. Okay. <laughs> you guys need help over there? We need help. You don't need to pay attention to this. Oh, don't look at this. Oh my gosh. We are experiencing oh, these look great. a 20-second delay, and we oh. can't see what you're doing when you're saying what to do. So <laughs> I don't. I'm really struggling here. Okay. Okay, first of all, these colors are really great. Second of all, when you do... You should probably go back to the people. You think so? No, you're doing fine. Okay. I need to know. So you're going to do this main, and then when you do the lines... Here, I'm going to do it right here. I don't... I have what I was like confused about was delay, yeah. right? Right? Okay. Because like, then I look up, and then I thought you had a different paper, and then I was like... <laughs> <laughs> So you're just going to do alternating lines okay, like that and see well, if, you, if you notice, I'm really good at the line thing. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> see, Casey, look at all those And lines. then after you I lay know, that where down. Where does that go in relation to this? Like, what is this supposed to be? That's 
Or you're supposed to alternate in a circle. Yeah, so these lines are going to be alternating in a circle. If you did oh. them on top of each other, that's fine. Just kind of like so, see that? blend right. it out. No, that's... Okay. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm Where is this supposed to be placed? That's my question. I'm so we're doing this... Okay, there. this is where it's really handy to have the, the reference painting. Yeah. So we're going to be having like the dot here going okay. this way. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Is this my brush? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, I didn't know if I brought it with me. <laughs> if your colors are turning out different, don't stress about it. It's okay. It takes a little bit to figure out how the colors interact with each other. So if your purple flowers are now rainbowy flowers, I love the rainbow. Don't stress about it. Okay. So yeah, mine turned a little bit brown, so I'm gonna try and bring in some pink a little bit to brighten it up. So I'm gonna do the bottom of my flower here. And I'm just gonna blend it using water up. How are you feeling, Drea? You know? I can't wait to see the final product because I know <laughs> once we add in all the leaves that it will look good, but right now seeing the skeleton of it is like eh. And for some of you, if it's not looking detailed enough and you feel like you're losing a lot of detail, then let it dry and we'll come back and we'll just do some line work on it. And so that way um, we can get a little bit more information on there. But when it's wet, we don't want to mess with it too much because the, that detail line work will just bleed out. So yeah, don't mess with it too much. If it's not looking how you want it to look, just leave it alone for a minute and we'll come back to it. Uh, we're gonna do some leaves now. So we're gonna take a break from flowers, do some leaves. And for my leaves, I like to mix my olive green with a little bit of black. Little bit being the operative. Yeah, a little bit, just a tiny. This one's the red. <laughs> Yep. No, that's good. Like yeah, that looks good. Now with these kind of leaves that have kind of a sharper edge, there's two ways you can do it. Um, you can just draw oh, that looks good. a nice. leaf. Now which leaf are we doing? The big fatty? We're doing this. Yeah, the big fatty. The big guy. The big guy. Big kahuna right here. And this is going to go in between these two flowers that you have down. So okay. you can make it as big as you want. So for these leaves, I usually lay down and while it's still wet, then I do the sharp edges because sometimes it's hard just to outline right away. So if I have a reference of where to start it from. So I lay down my color and then I go in and I'm just gonna do a little bit of edges on it. Chad, your mom says she wants some more yellow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and while it's still wet. That's awesome. I mean, it, I like to have really interesting just watercolor patterns and textures emerge. So I'm just gonna plop in a little bit of color while it's wet. And this is a good time where you can do a plop of yellow or a really dark green. We're just gonna lay that down and just let that spread out and play on its own. Yeah, very nice. Looks like a hand. <laughs> Just right at the end there. A monster. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, just okay. right cool. at the corner there. So what you might want to do, Drea, <laughs> is you might want to, um, because what's happening, we want this part to connect to this part. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're gonna make it so that bottom just connects. That's good. That's good. <laughs> like that. I'm gonna do another drop of yellow. And we're gonna do that, that same idea um, over by this flower. Now we don't want the whole leaf to be shown. And if you don't wanna do the sharp edges on yours, if you like just the shape of the soft leaf, that is totally fine. Don't feel like you need to do these edges if you like the look of a smooth leaf a little bit better. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna use a light wash. It's always a good idea to use a lighter wash when you're outlining. Um, because then you can always go back and darken it. And that way, if you made a mistake, it's a lot easier to pick up and clean up than if it's a super dark color. So I'm just gonna do kind of like a half a leaf coming up behind. 
So I do my leaf, and then I'm going to fill it in with a light wash. Do I still need to slow down, or am I? I'm going to ask if uh, anybody has questions. Is everybody feeling? Do I do I need to go slower or go over anything before we keep yeah, we going? Go back over some yeah, we can go back over things if you want me to redo something. And remember not to be too hard hard on yourself. A lot of this just takes practice and playing around. So why do you choose these particular like watercolors? Is this something that you yes. just, these this particular brand like you? So I choose these watercolors because the color of them is very vibrant. Okay. And um, so you can get some really gorgeous, especially when you're doing florals, the colors of them are beautiful. And they, for me, I like that they're liquid because then I can use them straight out of the bottle if I really wanted that super concentrated color. And which, which is what I like to do when I do my little drops of watercolor in there. I like to have a super water, uh, concentrated watercolor. They do spread really easy. And so um, I like that because then it makes me feel like I'm losing control a little bit, which I think is fun when you're painting. And I think yeah. that we should all kind of have that of a little bit of losing control. Hey, a couple of questions on, are the videos gonna be available after when everybody gets their supplies and stuff? Yeah, so if you don't have your supplies yet or you're just not ready to do the painting tonight, they this video will absolutely be available. We're gonna put it on our website under previous projects. So if you can't tune in right now or you just don't have the things, you can just go back onto our website, look under previous projects, and our video will be there after tonight. We'll upload it. And all of our projects will be that way. So even if we're going maybe a little bit too fast or you wanna try again, you can come back to that website, click on it, watch it in your leisure, and have a good time. Yeah, pause it. Yeah, pause it if you need to. Um, and then another fun thing you can do to add a little bit of texture is just take your brush with clean water and just drop it in and um, That's cool. you can get some really interesting textures because when that water plops in, it pushes all of the pigment out to the edges. So you can get some really interesting watercolor textures that, that awesome. way. Yeah, isn't that fun? That's way cool. Yeah. Gives it kind of an organic, like a really yeah. organic textural feel to those leaves. Spoken like a true artist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our next uh, thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just do these little, I call them like, berry flowers or um, kind of like buds yeah. right here. So I'm just gonna use, I like to use a really light wash for these. So a really light pink maybe. What else is color looking? No, it's kind of yellow. I want that to be a little bit more pink. To lighten pink. the color, what do you use? You just use mostly water. So if you want your color to be lighter, really use light. more Gradually. water. If you want your color to be really dark and concentrated, then use more paint. So after I get my brush the, nice the and wet with color. color goes so far too, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. I'm just gonna do... Um, I'm watering ours down. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm just gonna start, and these are kind of uh, circular oh. shapes that we're gonna be doing here. Maybe not perfect circles. <laughs> Um, because <laughs> you guys okay? Yeah, we're mixing good, too we're close. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like to do a bunch of them. Um, there's no set number. I think here I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> you can just do a set. You can have them kind of touching a little bit if you want. But usually I like to have it um, start a little bit bigger and go small. Now you're gonna see that there is a darker tip on those and that's because after I lay it down, I go back and I get a little bit darker color and I just touch the top of those and that color is just gonna bleed a little bit onto that light wash. So it kind of looks like um, the bud of a flower where the tip is just dark. Like that. Okay. Yep, that looks great. Looks good, looks good. Okay. So the next flower, I'm gonna, if you bought the brushes that we have, I've been using a size four pretty much this whole time, but now I'm gonna switch to a size two. 
you want to go and check on check on everybody's in case they kind of show what's going on? Talk yeah. Real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have Rachel and Jenny's flowers. They're looking good. There. You sure? Yes. <laughs> So I like this part right here where there's some detail work right there. Yeah. I think that's really nice. And I think this uh, texture that you're getting is really nice on your leaves. And actually, if you look at Rachel's over here, look at how cool this is. Yeah. And that's just water that she lays down. And this edges right here where it's like green and then a little bit yellow and white is beautiful. And that's exactly what we want in watercolor is we want that interesting texture that happens. Right here we have Drea, and that when that dries, that's gonna look really cool, right there. Almost oh, yeah, that's awesome. yeah. Yeah, she has some really cool colors going on here with a little bit of that kind of brown in her leaf. Her leaf is a little bit more brown. And the same thing, it looks like your flower touched yeah. that, which I think is super cool, because that just yeah, pulled that really color. Awesome. And so you're gonna get some really interesting color variation right there in that leaf, and then it on the edge of that flower. All right. Okay. So we're going to do a scribble flower. I call it a scribble flower because we're just scribbling really. And for this one, I just used the uh, Hyacinth Blue straight. So I didn't mix any colors with that. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> mm, I know my color. <laughs> so we're going to be doing um, this flower right here, which is going to go right next to our buds and the first flower that we lay down. So for that, I kind of just do um, a scribble. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to be... Um, Wait, are we using the number one or number... I'm using number two, oh. so the smaller one. Um, but the Princeton brushes are really nice because they still have that fine point. So if you just have a four, that's fine too. You can still use your four. And so I'm just going to do... This one you need to do a little bit fast, but it's okay because it's a scribble. So we're just going to do kind of a circular scribble like this. Okay. We're gonna leave that white that's in the middle there that we made doing that scribble. And then I'm just gonna take my brush and using the edge of it, so I'm kind of painting from the side, I'm just gonna kind of let that water, that color bleed out. Okay. Oh, cool. All right. So if we work quick, then this color is just gonna kind of bleed. Ribble? Yep. Yep, perfect. And you're just going to use straight water around the edges, and then it's just naturally going to spread out and bleed. I don't really know what's going yeah. on with my scribble, but... No, that's great. Now just take your, the edge of your, get your brush nice and wet, take the edge, mm -hmm. and um, just get it really wet along the edges. And leave this part white. Don't touch that with the brush. That looks so cool. Yeah, that's a really cool. Yeah. That that does. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's awesome. So for yours, Rachel, what we might want to do. So, so we have this, but I want a little bit more circular. Well, we I just want it more concentrated in the center. So here we lost a little bit of value change. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to take that color and just drop it right in. Okay. So we have a darker center. Okay. And then I'm going to use, and then I want the edges to be a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna spread it a little bit more like this. Oh, like that. Wow. So that way we have a nice dark center and then a really light edge, which is what we want. That's very nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. That okay. Yeah. And you see how that just High moves five. out? Okay, we're just gonna do that same exact thing on the bottom here in between, uh, so this one right here. In between our leaf and our so flower. Really quick, yeah. How? What's the frequency with which you want to change your water and stuff like that? Um, yeah. If you start it to start to affect the color that you're putting yeah, down, then you really can start changing it. Usually, yeah. usually I can use the the whole cup of water with one painting. Okay. Yeah, right here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but if you feel like it's affecting, please yeah, go change yeah, your water. Get some clean. Yeah, get some clean stuff. So um, we'll do the scribble flower again. So I'm just going to do a scribble. And my scribbles are a little bit more circular. And then I'm going to get my brush nice and clean. 
and just go along the edge of that scribble. Or at least wet. Or at least wet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we can get it totally clean. And just go along the edge. And if it runs into other flowers when it bleeds a little, little that is okay. We kind of want our flowers to run into each other. We don't want a lot of spaces in between because that's how it, it looks like that um, it's blooming or it's overflowing with flowers. Very nice, beautiful. Yep, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, we have one more larger flower and this is going back to the first one which we did which is the dot with the, with the circular lines around it. So I'm gonna use, so we're gonna be doing this one right here. Oops, at this top. And we're going back to number four? You can do a two or a four. The two, the two is good if you're doing detail lines and the four is good for spreading. Okay. Uh, we, we do that one more time. Show that one again. So the, oh, the flower? The flower we're doing, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna be doing this flower right here, which is following the similar pattern that we had here and here, which is we start with a dot and then we do circular lines around it and then we smear it and spread it. So I'm going to take my brush, put paint on it. We might need a cookie sheet next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be too big. I'm like, I think I'm liking the big tray. <laughs> it actually is really nice because you have all of this space to mix. Yeah, it's really nice. So it doesn't hinder your colors at all. And I want mine to be a little bit more pink. So I'm going to start with my dot in my center. And I'm going to go circle around alternating circular lines. And this one, because it looks like we're looking at it overhead, we're gonna do it all the way around and not just more on one side. And now I'm gonna get my brush clean and just start to smear it. So mine's kind of a pinkish. I'm gonna drop a little bit of yellow in it in the center just to see what it does. So I'm gonna take my daffodil yellow and while it's still wet, I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow to that pink. And usually when you're painting the flower, when you're doing the petals, you want kind of a swoop motion. So you're not just doing we're not just gonna be doing like straight lines like this. We're actually taking our brush and doing kind of a curve swoop around. So if you need a little um, paper next to you so you can practice these things before you lay it down, please feel comfortable doing that. And then I'm also gonna drop another drop of just kind of more bright pink in the center because I want my center to be a little bit more bright and see how that, that's just gonna naturally spread and flow out. Is mine too light on the edges? No, what I would do is I would maybe take your brush and try and get a good, cause I think this is a really nice soft wash here, mm -hmm. but we're kind of losing like a middle. So maybe swirl it around more with the to pink. the middle and then drop a darker center in there. Okay. Now we're gonna do some leaves. And you'll notice that when we first start, you might be feeling a little bit stressed out because these flowers aren't looking exactly how you want. Um, but I've noticed that with bouquets and florals, the more you add along the edges and you just do variations of size and flowers and leaves, there's so much to look at that nobody is gonna be focusing on one flower and worried about it. They're gonna be like, because there's so much going on here, there's so many things to look at, um, they're not gonna focus on one flower that you might not like. So it's, it's all about the effect at the, at the end when it's all finished. So don't give up if you're halfway through and you're not loving it. Just try and keep going till the end. I will keep going. <laughs> well, you guys have to. You're right. <laughs> yeah. We're in for the long haul. <laughs> we don't have enough. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna be doing um, this kind of longer leaf right here this stem. And so remember that when you're painting these, it's good to have variation in sizes of leaves. So I have my large leaves here. 
I have medium sized leaves here and then I have some nice small leaves. And I usually try and go in that order where I lay down my larger flowers first, then my large leaves, then the medium size, and then going towards um, do the small, like smaller stuff at the end. And that's really just to fill in spaces that are bare. And when you're doing leaf work, when you do your stem, you wanna be really light pressure with your brush. So you'll notice here that if I have a hard pressure, my line is thick, okay? See how thick my line is because I'm pressing hard? Now I like my stems to be really thin and kind of dainty, so I like the pressure to be really light, and when your pressure is light, you're gonna get a nice thin stem. So that's just, this is the same exact brush, but it's just showing you how much pressure affects your line work. So if you need to practice on a little extra sheet, um, just doing some straight lines, go ahead and, and go for it. And another thing I've learned with doing leaves and stem work is when we do a long straight line, you're not gonna be um, moving your wrist straight. Like um, you're not gonna be doing this because then it's naturally gonna curve. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be moving your whole arm down. So when you're doing a long, thin line, yeah. You see how that line is now straight, yeah. where this has curved because your wrist, you were using your funny, wrist. I feel like I have more control when I do like that. Mm -hmm. You do, you feel like you have more control when you do the wrist, but just how our hands are is it's gonna curve. But if you want a nice, thin, long line, you're gonna use your arm to go straight down. So like that, as opposed to now, if you want your uh, stem to have a little bit of a curve in it and you feel more comfortable using more of your wrist, that's fine. But just for those who are running into a problem of not being able to do long straight lines, you're gonna wanna use your whole arm. So I'm gonna start with my leaf first, my top leaf, because then I can decide you know, where it ends. Um, and I want it to kinda end like around here, around a little bit longer than where we did those little berries. And then I do my stem. Yeah, very nice. Beautiful. And I'm just gonna do my leaves off of that stem. And for this, if you just wanna use mainly a wash first, you can. If they overlap a little bit, with your berries, don't worry about it. it. We want them to overlap, we want them to be connected with each other. And wash just means water, right? Wash just means, um, yeah, like the, how much is on, so a light wash is more water and less paint, okay. a dark wash is more paint and less water. And then after I do my leaves, I like to drop in just at the corner where the leaves meet the stem. I like to drop in a little bit of paint because then that's just gonna spread. Yeah and you're gonna get that cool texture on there. And I'm doing a little bit longer skinnier leaves on this. Okay. We can take a water break if we need to. Should we take a water break? Uh, How do you guys, what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm probably getting to that take point a where I <laughs> okay, I'm going to clean out my water. If you feel like cause my water is getting a little bit dark, if you need to clean out your water, this is a good time to do so. I'm going to steal yours really okay. quick and just dump it out. Go ahead. Oh, that was yours. Okay. I love fat leaves. They're actually my favorite. <laughs> no, aren't they so fun though? Cause you get like the yeah, coolest. Oh, that's okay. That that's right? just fine. Yeah. 
I feel like this last flower that I did is like my best one. And mm -hmm. I feel like it was because I was like more sloppy at it. If you go like let that water. Yeah. Like, if you go fast and feels. quick, like literally this painting, I'm not kidding, took me 20 minutes. And that's just because you, if you, the faster you go, the faster the water and the pigments react to each other. And that's when you get the really yeah. cool textures awesome. and the, the cool bleeds with each other. Okay, we good? When we just let our creative juices flow. Yeah, when we kind of just let go and paint. Bada boom, bada bing. And it just comes out. One of my favorite things is that you'll say, put a flower here, and we all put a flower here, and they're all different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and yeah. I, I do, I really like that part of it, because it's like, you you think it's, it's going to be just like yours, but... And it's we're different sizes. Yeah. We're different and shapes. even I mean, I painted this myself and just looking at it, there is absolutely a difference between these two. Absolutely. And that's because every single time your colors are going to be a little bit different and you're going to mix. But those are the changes that we need to embrace and not stress about. We need to understand that it's not going to be perfect every single time. And it's when we understand that, that we can come up with some really cool things and we kind of just let it go. Okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do a little bit more leaves around the edges. Um, so I'm going to uh, do this leaf right here, which is kind of the same thing we did over on this side, which is kind of like it's behind the flower, uh, half leaf. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do this uh, kind of medium sized leaf over here. So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna show you. So the first way I showed you is I just did the leaf and then I do the edges. And the other way that I do it, and I do it both ways, is I kind of just draw it from the beginning. So I have that. I draw it. There's my point. My other side. And then I fill it in. But I know that it might, maybe your drawing skills, you're just not comfortable with that yet. Using green stuff? Yeah. Green mixed with a little bit of black or yellow. So if you mix your green with black, you're going to get a really dark green. If you mix it with yellow, you're going to get a lighter green. So it just depends on what color you want. And after I lay that down, I'm going to go in and drop in a little bit of color just at the bottom there and just let that spread. Very nice. So after you do your big leaf, and the reason why I like the bigger leaves is because you have so much more area to play with the cool textures of dropping in color or dropping in water. So uh, you can drop in water, you can drop in color, or you can do a little bit of both. But really take this time to, to kind of play in that area and let the water and the paint mix together. So then I'm going to do um, the leaf that's coming out right here. And so this one's a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna be essentially doing the same thing that we did on this first one, except letting my leaf be a little bit wider. So I'm gonna draw my leaf first. It's gonna be nice and wide. Fill that in. And I do my stem. And we basically just want it to make it look like it's coming out from underneath these flowers we already painted. So try and have it come out from underneath there so it's meeting and they're kind of running into each other. Oh. And I got a little bit green. This is gonna happen. You're gonna put, I put my hand in my green and smeared it. So I'm just gonna try and lift this off a bit. And put a flower over. I absolutely <laughs> gonna put a flower. You won't even see it. It's gonna be fine. I'm gonna do another medium flower in this bottom corner because my bottom right hand corner is looking a little bit bare. So I'm gonna do another kind of medium sized leaf similar to the one I did up here.
I'm going to get a little bit more green. Will we go back in and fill in the space? Like yes. Okay. So if you have spaces in between your flowers, um, kind of some more white, bare areas, um, I'll go in and I'll show you how I fill those up. Can you pass the green down as well? Yes. I think we need to be stuck, yeah, we don't do. we? We do. Okay. Beautiful. I'm dropping in a little bit of water on these to get some cool textures. Thank you. No problem. Okay. That looks good. I'm gonna wait for I'm gonna wait for people to catch up with me for a second. Are there any questions out there? Do you have any? You want me to go over anything really quick? We doing okay? Christina Nibley says she's ignoring her two children while she's messing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good choice, Nibs. That's good. <laughs> They can't hear me, just so you know. Like, like you'll have to repeat it. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> sorry. I thought that you guys could hear what I was saying. So Christina, Christina Nibley said that she was ignoring her two children while painting this. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now I'm going to do... Um, these kind of, I just call them kind of overflowing flowers. They're just a good thing that I use uh, when I need to kind of fill up space and I want to show a little bit of movement. Um, and these are pretty fun, I think. I mean, I think all of this is fun. But um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to mainly use hyacinth blue in this. And I'm just going to do circular dots. And I'm going to start kind of to where it thins out. So I'm just using the side of my brush really to kind of do a curved line like that. And then while it's still wet, so you kind of want to move a little bit quickly, I'm just going to start, I'm kind of just connecting those together. Which one was that? Oh, that's the, oh, yeah. that's the purple. And is it a C? Yeah. We're making a C? Um, it's not really a C. It's kind of more like a like a triangle almost. So you're going to have it wide, and then it's going to kind of come to a point almost. Oh, okay, so we're doing. Where is this? Right here. And are we but using are our thicker brush now, or still our two? You can use you can use either um, because we're really just playing with the laying it down. So I'm using my two right now, but you can use the four for this. Okay. And are we making like little? What are we making? Dots? Yeah, so you're going to make dots and then rinse your brush and you're just going to kind of use that water and start kind of touching them in between and smearing them together. No, that's good. So when we when we do this, we want to let it, uh, we want to kind of drop it in because when we, when we smear back and forth, we're going to lose a little bit of color it's all going to look like one color where we want it to do have like do darks and lights. This? So you kind of, um, you just kind of do that same motion that you use to lay down the dots with water, with water to connect them. And then that way it's just going to spread out a little bit differently because if you just went back and forth across this whole thing, it would look, um, it would look, just like, yeah. it would look okay. like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's okay. So if that happens, you're just going to, can I move yours over here so yes. people can yeah. see? Um, so if this happens where it kind of just looks like a straight line and it's not as rounded as you would like, you can still keep this and just round the edges. 
So round the edges a little bit. Like that. And looks like oh, that's way better. So then it looks like um, circular things kind of pouring out of something. So if it looks, if it's going straight like that, just take your brush and do kind of rounded edges. And then you can even go in a little bit. Beautiful. And do little drops of color. It's the touch of the master. <laughs> <laughs> so so Molly's asking, cool. how likely is it that she could do this with Crayola watercolors? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can do this with Crayola watercolors, but the colors are just not going to be as bright, and they just probably won't spread as easy. So Molly asked if she could do this with Crayola watercolors, and. Um, you can absolutely, whatever supplies you have, just use them. Um, and you'll see, once you find the right medium, and for me it was these watercolor paints, I just could not stop painting because the color was so beautiful. So just be aware that while you're painting, if the color is not turning out how you want it, or you might get frustrated, it might just be the paints that you're using. But please still do it. So the berry, I'm gonna do that same thing here, right here. Where I draw. I'm going to cover my, my little uh-oh that I made. So you're going to do circles, kind of starting out wide. They're going to narrow down. And then I'm going to do that same motion with clean water. And remember, we want them coming, kind of coming out from underneath things, so let them touch the flower that they're closest to. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. I don't really know what I got going on over here. No, that's great. So what you want to do for yours, so we have some nice color that you already laid down. Now you're just going to take your brush, mm -hmm. and you want it to be just water. I'm just gonna really just smear okay. that color that you already laid down. We wanna smear it. Oh, smear that it looks good, yeah. yeah, okay. And then, like you see right here how it's kinda all one color. If you yeah. wanna add a little bit to it, mm -hmm. just kinda drop in. Okay. Like that. So now you have nice variation from dark to light. It is super cool how the water moves. Yeah. Yeah, look at that right there. That is beautiful. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, these are looking great. Oh, yeah, that's gorgeous. Casey, do you want to get this right here? Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Let's make art. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing it right now. This is what we're doing. Okay. So we pretty much have laid down our large flowers, our large leaves, our medium leaves, our medium flowers. And now essentially what we're doing is I just call them filler leaves and filler buds. So this is where it's up to you. Okay. This is a challenge for you guys, but I know you can do it. Is you're going to look at your painting and you're going to say, okay, where are there really big white, uh, like, uh, what am I trying to say? Like Space. spaces, white spaces. Thank you. Along the edges. So for me looking at this, this right here is a huge white space. So I'm going to put a longer leaf in there and then I'm going to start doing smaller leaves around here, around here. So this is where you kind of want to look. So if you have a big space in the center, we'll, we'll do that at the end. I'll show you how you can kind of Go back to that. That's gonna look good. I jumped ahead. I jumped ahead. No, that's I fine. Like, uh, nobody else has a big space in the center. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I have a big space well, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I was like No, that's okay. Know, Essentially what I do is a scribble flower in between there. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I, I was headed with that. Perfect. Man. You just know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, he freaking knows how to make this easy. <laughs> So should I just go ahead and do a little scribble flower? If you wanna do it, if that is bothering you, you wanna get rid of rid of it, go ahead and do a scribble flower in there. So uh, I'll do it small. I don't have a huge space on mine, but I'll show you what do I do. Do I want to do it more pinkish, do you think? Or
So there's, there's not really, right? Because we didn't paint a flower. We just want it to give the illusion that there's something underneath. And then if it's all one color, you just drop some other darker in. That's right, that's right. Do I do a couple more maybe? Yeah. And then if you just kind of want it, you can like spread it around a little bit so it looks like the center of a flower maybe. Yeah. And now I'm gonna do my leaves to kind of cover up um, this kind of big white space that I have right here. So I'm gonna start with my big leaf. <laughs> I messed up the switches. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what? We were washing the floor for about two seconds. Oh, <laughs> you guys got some good floor action. <laughs> it's okay, we're all learning here. I got a big mama leaf right here. <laughs> That's all right, yeah. Just keep going with it. Just keep oh, going with it. So cool. I, like I would do another garden. larger leaf maybe there and let it go underneath your flower. <clears throat> so. So I, I've got... <laughs> I've got a leaf that's been pooling for a while. That's okay. It's probably not going to be absorbed by the paper. Right? <laughs> Is this where I it should just... It will absorb, but if there's too much water and it's just not drying, you can just take your paper oh, towel okay. and, and pick it up it like and dab it. Yeah. If it's just getting too wet for you, okay. just pick that up. And actually, you can get some really cool texture with the paper towel when you pick things up. That made a cool little line yeah. in there. That's awesome. So you're going to do another leaf, and we want it to be underneath this flower. So we're kind of going to just work around it. Oh, I see. Like that. So you're going to do the same thing probably on the other side. But make that flower pop, too. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So I'm going to do another little bunch of berries kind of right here something similar to this. I'm gonna do it right here to fill up that space. And I like doing these little buds and berries um, on the outside because if we didn't have them, then the whole surrounding flowers will be just green. And so I like being able to have a little bit of color on the edges, which is why I like to put out these, um, these buds that are going on here. Because then that way on the edges we have color too. So you just get a lighter wash do kind of circular, more oval, so it's not perfectly round. And then while it's still wet, get a darker color and kind of dot. Just at the top. And don't mess with it too much because then you're gonna lose how it just naturally spreads across that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh my goodness. I have really this is single. beautiful. <laughs> you guys are doing great over here. Give okay. Us a smile. <laughs> yeah, look at this. These are so beautiful. Okay, so what do you guys what do you need help with? What are you feeling like? Can I fix any of the flowers I don't like? <laughs> Which ones don't you like? These two. Don't look and at this mine. One. So okay, bad. why don't you like these? Because I can see the hard lines. Okay. But if I add more water, it just makes everything muddy. Yeah. So this one. Just let it go. We just have to let it go. And then okay. next time when you do them, you're just going to want to work faster, and that's how you get rid of the lines. Okay. So sometimes we just have to do it to figure out how the water and the paint work together, and you're right. like, if you don't like those hard lines, then uh -huh. when you just paint the next flower, just work quick, and yeah. then that way those lines are just going to go away. Okay. Yeah. But I, I think they look great. I think you guys Practice. are doing a great My job. My problem is leaves. My leaves she look like pickles. A tough time with the leaves. <laughs> this right here. <laughs> like all I see is a pickle. <laughs> Have any ideas on how to make yeah. leaves better? Yeah. So if you're if you're oh oh I dropped a paint. With Sorry. Pickles. If your if your leaves are looking a little pickly, <laughs> just, the way to solve that is to get um, like a more of a point on them. Okay. 
It was really hard for me. The, the hardest part for me, honestly, was going around, like, obviously. See, mm -hmm. around, like, because I was watching you and trying, I, I dimension, right? I got I can't see it. <laughs> so, like, tips, yeah, because I have a hard time going around. So, really, I'm just going to sharpen this, and so I'm just going to go to a point at the top here, okay? Okay. And then what I want to do is I'm going to add a little bit of the sharp edges to this leaf to make it a little bit more leafy. So really what you do is you kind of just, um, you want to be light with your brush in order to get a point. So you're just going to be using that tip and you're just going to be spreading it along here. So I'm going to do a little point here. And we want the points. So we want this part to hit this part here. Okay, so we're not doing this, mm -hmm. right? We want it to kind of connect so it's one leaf. And if we just add a little bit of sharpness to those edges here. Okay. See, because I was, that's my problem is I felt like it was kept getting too big and then I didn't know how to fix it. And yeah. Then, then it looked like a nail. If it's big, if it's big, that's okay because we like big leaves, right? Because then we can do really cool stuff where we just drop in like color and um, just let that play together. Okay. Um, but yeah, with leaves, you just want to make sure that the, the edge of your leaf is a little bit more sharp. Okay. And then that's gonna come across more as a leaf and not a pickle. Not a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay. Okay, how are you guys doing over here? All right. We're trying. Your leaves here are beautiful. I like that really nice point that you have right here. Do you like them? I do like okay. them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because see, you can even see that really nice point like mm -hmm. compared to maybe even these over here. Yeah. That's really nice. Thank you. Okay. So we're going back to it. And this is where we're going to start putting in smaller, smaller leaves all around. So um, I'm going to take my, my smaller brush for this, my two. Um, because it's easier to do smaller things with a smaller brush. But if you only have a big brush, that's fine. Because even I even have my Princeton 10 here. And you can see how narrow it is at the top. So you can still get a really fine point on this. But just for control rise wise, I like using the smaller brush. So I'm going to take my smaller brush and I'm going to start doing smaller leaves. Um, and even though this I'm going to be doing one on either side because my flower is a little bit up on this, so I want it to look. So it's really the same thing that we've been doing here, just on a smaller scale. So I do my little leaf first, and then I do my stem, and I let it. I want it to connect out from what I've already made. I and then, seriously can't believe this is looking this decent. Right? Because right when you first started, you're like, oh no, I'm look like, at that oh flower. Oh my gosh, that flower. Yeah. But as we add more things to it, yeah. there's just so, it just yeah, looks like blooming. And I think that's a problem that we have, right? Is we see something, we get frustrated that it's not looking, and so we stop. But if we just keep on going, we can make something that's really cool. So I'm going to do a couple of those stems on either side. And if you want to mix up color too, if you want your greens to be, I'm going to mix a little bit more yellow with my green because then it's just variation, right? We like color variation. So I'm doing a little bit more of a yellow green. And I just mixed my daffodil yellow with my green to get this color. Will you pass that down, actually? The daffodil yeah. yellow? Yeah. yeah. One of those trays out. Yeah, we're all stocked up, aren't we? Yeah. You're going to get drips on your paper. That is okay. So this is where it's just really fun um, for you because this is where I'm really asking you to kind of be the artist and look at it and just say, okay, where are their white spaces? I see a little white space right here. So I'm going to put a little leaf in there. And then you can always go back 
and add a little bit of color right drop in so there's a little bit of dark to them. Now these bigger buds, I'm gonna do a couple bigger buds on the top just to show you. They're pretty much the same thing that we did on the bottom, just a little bit, um, just a little bit faster. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use uh, the, I'm gonna mix the moss rose and the hyacinth blue to get this a uh, really pretty kind of magenta. I'm just gonna do a circle. And I'm gonna rinse my brush because I want there to be a little bit of variation between the three. And then I'm gonna just drop in a little bit of color at the bottom this time. You can do the top if you like the look of the top a little bit better. I do both on them. Um, just for, just to kind of change it up. So I did kind of a lighter wash. I'll do it one more time. So I did a lighter wash, kind of circular. If it's not a perfect circle, that's okay. Rinse my brush, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. And then I'm gonna drop in some color. It's just gonna spread. And then I'm not gonna add stems to those until they dry um, because I don't want green getting into those. Actually, I did this one down here and my green got in and I really oh, like how yes. that looks. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put this so they can see it really good over here. So right here, we got a really nice green. My green just went right into the flower yeah. and I was like, oh, that looks kind yeah. of cool. Oh, really cool, Jenny. Yeah. That looks it was awesome. like uh, not what I was expecting, but very fun. There we go. I'm going to do that with one of them. Okay, I'm going to add my stems and then I'll do like a little longer leaf on each side here. Kind of a skinnier one. Where do you think I need some? Okay, so I'm gonna move it over here so they can see it too. So this is great because it's so big, right? It's blooming. I want a little bit of smaller leaves and I think maybe coming out right here okay. and maybe right here and here and just get some nice smaller detail work in there with the leaves. All right, just leave. And where does, th this is one of my problems. Where does yeah. my stem go? Cause here I've got these stems that are leading, like some of them are on those flowers. Uh -huh. But does the stem just like, appear out of here or yeah so I just try and have it kind of connect so if this is like the center of my bouquet right mm -hmm. I just want the stems wherever they're coming out of whether it's here here or here they they're move. basically originating out of that center but we're using an, ima an Im imagined line right. so we're not going to be drawing a line from here to here for this stem we're just going to pretend that that it's kind of coming out so the if sides. I come out of this one, do I kind of come behind this leaf or can I, do I come up here? What, what is it? Or behind the flower? How do I do this? For me, I think it would be nice if it kind of comes out right here. Okay. So you don't have to do a line all the way down through if you don't want to, or you can. Mm -hmm. um, I've done both, like you can see on this one that I did carry this line all the way down, mm -hmm. but you don't have to. It could stop right at that leaf. Mm -hmm. I just like to do my leaf first because then I know uh, how far on the edge it's going to go out. But if you feel comfortable doing the stem first, you can do that. I just like having a little bit of control of where it stops, where if I do my stem first, then I don't really like that leaf could be huge. And I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> you know, you know how things just kind of pop up. Happened to <laughs> yeah, that's happening to me right now. I did something I messed up and now I don't know what to do about it. Okay, let me see. I had an idea and then I hated it and then I decided <laughs> I it. That's okay. I'm so proud of you for even trying this new idea. So what we want to do here is we're just going to let this, we're going to leave it for now okay. because we want it to dry. Okay. We don't want to try and fix things when they're like, unless we're lifting color off, mm -hmm. we just want to let things dry and move on and then we can go back after it's dried. And what I would probably do is I would probably just do another larger uh, leaf okay. right here. Okay. So this is the side and there's the other side. So it kind of looks like, um, like large leaves kind of coming out of this flower. Okay. 
Okay. Kay. So just move. So move try on. and ignore that. Mm -hmm. Don't stress about it. Okay. Move on to maybe start doing some leaf work up here. Okay. And then we'll come back and we'll fill in that space. Okay. You just heard the word pickle and you were all about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pickle on my brain. He's like, I gotta have me a pickle. <laughs> so I'm just adding ste uh, stems to the, to the little buds I put down. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more um, smaller leaves along this side and along here and probably here. And this is where it's fun too. You wanna to remember the pressure of your brush. That's how you get really thin lines too. So if you want a really dainty looking leaf or stem of leaf, you wanna be really light with your brush. Everyone's concentrating so far. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do another smaller, one of those leaves over here. And when I do the stems for these, the multi ones, the multi little berries that I have, what I do is I do one main stem and then I just kind of connect all of the, the buds to that main stem. So they're gonna kinda, and I like to curve my lines, but you can have them straight if you want. So I'm just gonna kinda curve to that main stem there. I'm gonna do a, a few buds right here too because I want just a little bit of color on that edge. How are you feeling, Andrea? I'm feeling pretty satisfied. Do you think I need more leaves though? Yeah, I would do some smaller leaves. I'm gonna move this here so, oh good, Casey's here. Um, I would do smaller leaves around here. Here, because it's looking nice and full, but what we're missing here is the variation in size. Okay. So do some really light, delicate leaves, probably around here, just kind of coming out. I don't have delicate down yet. <laughs> no, that's a, that stem oh. is. Really <laughs> <laughs> but that stem, I mean, the leaves don't have to be thin, but the stem, I think, is what really. Look how thin that stem is compared to this one right here. This is what we like to see, right? Because that looks like a nice little thin thing coming out. <clears throat> what do you think? I think that looks any, great. Any more? I think that looks. Great. I mean, is there anything about it that you want to add to it, or the only thing that bothers me is this right here, where the leaf, where the stem comes over the, the okay. flower. Okay. Okay. I'm going to tell you something that you just need to let that go. Okay. <laughs> 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 because it's not. Let me tell you, nobody's going to even notice that. Okay. One. And you don't think I should put like darker paint over it? Or... If you, the thing with watercolor is, the more you mess with it, if you, you can, you can try if you want to, but I think it looks fine okay. as it is and this is just because you painted it so you know that it's there okay. where if I walked oh, up and looked at leaf. that then we wouldn't Thanks. even notice oh yeah those are great leaves right there Thank beautiful you. I had to redeem myself <laughs> you didn't but you're, 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 you didn't really but you did redeem. <laughs> whatever oh, that's cool and I'll, a lot of people ask me like yeah. how do you know when you're done yeah, that's what I was just going to ask you. How do you know when? And it's because you look at something and you say, there isn't really any large gaps missing here. I'm not, there's not huge white things. There's nothing bothering me. I feel like you just look at something and you know that it's complete because you're like, I don't really need a, to add a leaf there because there's no huge white space. And I like the colors that are happening. 
So if you feel like you're done, then you're I done. I feel like this right here actually is a lot of medium. I feel that okay. kind of way with most of my flowers. They all kind of be okay. become medium. So if your value, so I'm going to put this here so you guys can see. So what she's saying here is there's not a lot of value change, right, in these flowers. Mm -hmm. There's not like a super dark, dark and a super light, light. So what you can do for that is you can go back in and just get, oh, let me make sure it's not green on my, on my brush but you can just get darker color because with watercolor, we can always go back and add to it. So you can go back into that center and do a little bit of detail work, right? Do a little bit of lines and maybe even smear it around a little if you want. So already this is kind of popping out yeah, more than it was. Much more. Fair, this way? A little bit. This way? Yeah, there you go. Okay. So we just went in, we added a little bit of dark to it and already this is popping. So you can do that at the bottom and kind of spread that out. So whenever you feel like your flowers are just too even valued, which means that they're, there's not a super dark and a super light, you can always go back in and drop in a little bit of dark to it. Judy Harvey says, Jenny, remember the galloping horse rule. That's right. <laughs> what is well, I always say quilt doesn't have to be perfect, if, especially if you're looking at it on a galloping horse. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's up for painting. Remember the galloping horse rule. Thank you. Who was that? Judy. Oh, thank you, Judy. <laughs> it's interesting how hard, how easy we can be to ourselves in one, in one creative area and how hard we can be on ourselves yeah. in another. You know, it's like you expect to sit down and sew this together and it's all going to work and... It's completely different. And it, I think it's really just our comfort levels. You're really comfortable with quilting. So if something happens, you go, oh, that's fine. Yeah, it's like no big deal. Yeah, but when you're starting something new, you want it to be so spot on that any mistake, you're like, how can I move on from right. this? But you just need to be kind, which is why I said at the beginning to be kind with ourselves because you are going to make mistakes, but that's okay. You just want to keep going and that's how we learn. I think that's the practice factor too because, you know, like with quilts, Seriously, I'm so proud of those very first ones, even mm -hmm. though they look terrible because mm -hmm. that's where I began. And we have to do that with this. Yeah. You know, we have to go, okay, you know, this is the first like bouquet I've ever really painted. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm going to just get better and better. You know, if I practice yeah. an hour today, tomorrow I'm an hour better. So I, I, yeah. do ha I have to remember that. Yes. And I even still have my sketchbooks from when I was in elementary school. And it is so satisfying to look back and just be like, this is where I started. And it can happen in such a short amount of time. I mean, this is your first painting, but it's beautiful. I mean, this is great for your first time. And that's what we have to remember is, you know, when we get older, we kind of are a little bit scared to try things because we expect are perfection. You, what are you saying about older here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm older. It's fine. I just mean... Um, I, I, good recovery. Good, uh, uh, how do I, how do I, how do I move past from this? You, you are right though. You are right though. You because do, it, I think that, and you know, I think it's so good for your brain though to do yeah. new stuff all the time. It's like, try it. And actually when I, yeah. when I teach watercolor classes, sometimes moms will bring their younger children that are around 10 yes. and they're so fun to watch because they just so go. They don't wait for me. They, they just paint. And we need to have that freedom with ourselves to just be like, I'm just going to have a good time. And they're so happy with what they painted. And I think that we lose that as we get older because we just expect this vision of how it's supposed to be that we forget to take chances and play around. Well, it's the whole story of the, the red flower, paint the flower red, you know, and uh, rather than just painting a flower, you know. Yeah. Okay, how are you feeling, Drea? I feel pretty good. Yeah, I it looks really great. Like I feel like I don't need to, I don't want to add anything else. Yeah, you feel and I like my good. Relics. This is beautiful. Uh, well, it's, we're going to okay, go back and do lines. Right? Yeah, we okay. can go back and do some line work for this, this and that one. Yeah. On, the, on the leaves? Uh-huh. Yeah, we'll go back. I'm just going to add in just a few more stems really quick, and then we'll go in and do some line work um, for those things that kind of got lost along the way. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, manly. Yeah. Yeah, you know? <laughs> beautifully manly. Beautifully? Beautifully manly, yeah. It's a word. Handsome. Bring it home flowers, my babe. There yeah. you go. Taryn is coming for you. <laughs>
I can't okay. believe you did that with makeup brushes, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary's asking if you're going to add veins to the to the leaves. I'm, I'm adding some veins, right? Original. Yes, we're going to add some veins. And the reason why I save that for last is because I want those lines to be sharp, so I want to make sure my leaf is dry. So that's why I lay it down, I do everything else, and then I come back and I'll do the line work because I want those lines to stay sharp. And if my leaf is wet, if I try and do that, then it's just going to bleed out and I'm not going to get that cool line. So we want that strong, sharp line. So that's why the details, the center of flowers, the line work, we just do at the very end. <laughs> Which I feel, looking at mine, um, I feel like I'm to that point where I got a lot. And um, I'm just adding some stems on some things I forgot to add stems to. And now I'm going to do the darker line. So look at your leaf and make sure it's dry before you do this. And I usually use a darker color with this. So I'm going to use green and black. Now I'm going to do it on this page first so you can see. So this one, when, when I do my veins on my leaves, I like to start out a little bit thicker and then let that line go to like a soft point. So you see the thickness difference between here and here? And that's just pressure difference while you're doing that. So if you're not quite there yet, you can just do a line. But I like it to be thick and then thin and that's just how you're doing the pressure. So this is harder pressure softer pressure, harder pressure, and then you kind of soften it up. So, and you know, sometimes my veins on my leaves go all the way to the end and sometimes they don't. So I'm just gonna start here and do my center. Sarah, she feels like she has an awkward gap right here. Okay. What should I do with that? Yes. So you have a really nice pink flower that's going on right here. Thank you. I would just, I would just take a clean wash mm -hmm. and carry that color up. Okay. Like that. So then, and spread it a little bit bigger this way and this way. So it kind of just looks like a larger pink flower that's underneath. Okay. Yeah. And then I would just do like a couple smaller, like these are really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Do a couple of those maybe coming out here and here. And then I think that will bring the composition back into it. Okay, so back to the veins on the leaves. Now, if your leaf is behind a flower, you're going to have to kind of continue the line. You're going to have to use an Im imaginary line all the way through. So I start my line and I'm going to pretend that it goes, keeps on going, but we can't see it. And then I'm going to continue it. So if you just need to move your hand with it and not touch the paper, that's fine. And finish that line out. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Like that. Now for the detail work on our flowers. So I usually only add veins to my larger leaves, but if you want to add veins to the, to like the medium sized ones, feel free to do so. It's just a, a styling choice. Now I'm going to grab some pink and I'm just going to kind of do these lines over again. So they're a little bit darker. So I'm going to do my dark center and the alternating circular. There. maybe a little bit at that bottom and smear it up. Now, Drea, for yours, because this, I'm going to move this over here so you can see. So for her flower, the center of her flower is already pretty dark, so it might be a little bit harder to do the detail work. I've noticed that you want your detail lines to be darker if they can. And so um, what colors do we have over here? I'm going to use almost like a black. I'm going to lift up this. So you're going to do like a darker, it's like a dark purple here and then lines around it. So you see how that's showing up better using yeah. a darker color. 
So if you see and that... Do you smear that at all? Uh, you can. I smeared it a little bit on my bottom. Um, <laughs> on the bottom of my flower. Um, but you can just leave them for me. I like how those lines work, look. So if you like the lines that you laid down doing the detail, um, you can keep them there. You don't have to smear them. I'm going to do a little detail work on this one too. So just make sure that whatever detail work you're doing, it's a darker value. It's crazy how different everybody's painting. I know. I love how different everybody's painting is. Same color. Okay. Yeah, Are we I good? love that too. I love how different everything is. Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. So, I think, I mean, does anybody have any questions? Do you have questions about? Barry Jean was wondering, will you spray a finish on it to set it? I don't usually spray finishes on mine. Um, however, if you are worried, because these are strong watercolors, so if water touches this, it is going to spread. Um, you can reactivate these watercolors. So if you're nervous about water uh, hitting them, then you can take um, the coverage spray. I think you can get them at art stores, or actually I've even heard of hairspray that you could use um, to kind of cover something so it doesn't move. But usually I don't um, do stuff over mine because I'm, I'm not worried about water um, getting on it. So it just depends on, um, on how you're feeling. If you wanna protect it, then you can use uh, a spray to cover it, to protect it so it won't move if you get water on it. Good. You wanna do one last check in with everybody? Okay. Sort of a final showcase. Yeah. And also, um, can you just like, Cover this up with saran wrap and re-wet it or let it dry or do you wash yes. it Yes. Okay. That's a great question. So the palettes, so we have our paints on our palettes, right? And we can see that even some of them have dried. You can absolutely reuse these. Okay. All you do is you just get a wet brush and uh, reactivate them. So you'll, um, if I'm using one color palette, I can use like one color palette for like a week because I just get my brush wet. And, and, uh, and it just comes back. Oh, awesome. Just like that. Yeah. So you're good. Okay. Is that a baking pan? This is actually a ceramics uh, butcher pan. Oh. And it is for painting. And it's actually really awesome <laughs> because the look at all of this space that we were able to oh, play with absolutely. mixing. I think I would like yeah. that have, way better than this. They have the large one and the small one. We oh, do. Okay. Yeah, we do have a medium size too. But it's, it's just so much more fun to have the space to spread the colors around, right? Because with these, which is sometimes good when we're first starting out because we like the comfort of having um, a place for each thing, right? Right. But because of this, we're able to let these colors stay how they are. Where this, they would have just puddled together. Absolutely. So I like having that big space. And it actually makes cleaning way easier. So when you are ready to clean this off and start a new color palette, you just run it under hot water and it just washes right off. Okay. Is it curved like that for a reason? So it that way um, it can stay separate. So you can put oh, you things, can if you don't want your colors to mix, you can put them on the edges. Okay. And so then- your brownies will be misshapen. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> He's thinking, what else can I use yeah. this for? Okay, so we're gonna, if your paintings aren't too wet, let's hold them up so everybody can see them. Here. Yeah. Come on, girls, come in here yeah. with your paintings. Yeah. Bring that pickle in so here. so nice. Thank you. Oh, oh that, that is really pretty. pretty. Yeah. yeah. Has, like, these are beautiful. Oh, so you guys. No, oh, these so are great. Good. They are. Wow. Isn't it interesting how. Holy cow. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. And. I just want to say, just seeing our reactions, we are so self-conscious about our own work, but we see our reactions when other people see yeah. it. So I'm going to challenge you to share your work. I want you to post it. I want you to send it to us. I want you to show your mom. 
I want you to show. (laughs) (laughs) But show people. We want to see it, and other people want to see it. And where do we post it? So uh, we have an instant. So you can email us directly. Um, Hello at let's go. Let's make art. We have our Instagram account, which is Let's Go Make Art. You can tag us in that. You can put it on our Facebook wall. If you have questions for me that you want me to give you advice on what to do, email me pictures. But this is the second hard part. The first hard part is just bringing yourself to do it. The second hard part is sharing it with people. Do you guys have a hashtag too? We do have a hashtag if you just want to post it on your own, which I hope you do because other people are going to be so excited when they see this. Um, it's hashtag let's go make art, hashtag all of purple flowers, because that's the name of this project. And um, I'm so excited that you guys came with us tonight and we're patient while we figured everything out, but I hope to see you. Do you? I, <laughs> I hope to see you. Uh, you want to show next week's? Oh, yes. Okay. For those that are still here. <gasps> okay. Your troopers, you ready for next week's project? I'm coming back. <laughs> We're doing a whale, oh, a humpback beautiful. whale. You might not think that you can do this. Yeah, you can absolutely do this. We're going to have the product list up tomorrow. I'm going to show you the steps on how to do this right here. Yes? So this is our blue humpback whale. That's so cool. And it's going to be gorgeous. So please. It's upside down. Oh, oh. There? Yeah. Okay. So this is next week. Come back and paint with us. Share your I work. I actually painted this. Oh, yes. Yeah. This, <laughs> <was Jenny. laughs> this was Jenny. This was Jenny. It's more in the shape of a pickle. I might have yeah, there you go. If you're a pickle leaf person. All right. Thank you so much.